Thank you all for making time out of your busy schedule to join us today in this momentous occasion of the standing up of the 319th Expeditionary Reconnaissance Squadron at Kanoya Air Base. The ceremony is performed in the presence of the members of the unit, allowing each person to observe the placing of authority with their new commander. All command authority and responsibility will be transferred to Lieutenant Colonel Kelly the moment he salutes Colonel O and says, Sir, I said man. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, 319th Expeditionary Reconnaissance Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Kelly. We had a C-17 land, came in and it had 18 pallets on it. Uh, got our crew together, we got the 60K loader, what we used to download the aircraft, and a forklift, um, pulled up to the back of the aircraft. Loadmaster came in, spotted us in, and at that point we started to download. We downloaded six pallets at a time with the K loader, and then had the forklift right behind it to pull the single pallets off. Um, it took us about an hour to download all 18 pallets, and um, we had a five-man crew out there. These are the final pieces that will allow us to then build and assemble the aircraft so then we can start our operations and our flights. Uh, most of our tools, uh, we got age equipment, uh, stuff to help store, raise the aircraft, um, our tie down so we can safely perform all the uh, operations and checks. Next step is to, we're gonna inventory it, make sure we have everything we need. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the build of our aircraft. And then after that, we're gonna then begin our test flights. So I'm a crew chief. Uh, we don't have, we have no back shops. I'm the engine troop, the hydro troop. Uh, between me and my guys, we're the ones that assemble the aircraft as this whole, and then we perform most of the tests. Uh, until we get to the avionics portion, then we pass that on to our specialist. Drop it slowly. Gotcha, uh, so earlier this morning, we finally got the last C-17 um, come in with the last of our equipment that's going to help uh, start our uh, aircraft unpack and initial build. Uh, so once I came in, we went right into it. We were able to uh, get the aircraft body out, install the wings, uh, the tails. Uh, and as you can see behind me, the prop is finally installed. So we still have a, additional um, components to install, but we're pretty much ahead of schedule of what we would like to see for today. My guys did amazing today. Uh, so like I said, we're uh, definitely ahead of schedule. Um, they have been wanting to get right into work. So after that last uh, C-17 arrived, we went right into it. But once we start getting more aircraft filled up, uh, we can start doing our operational checks, uh, be able to establish a link, uh, between our GCS, which is a ground control station, our GDTs, ground uh, data terminals, and uh, allow the uh, ops crew uh, to actually be able to start flying. So, uh, very critical step today. I would just like to express uh, my gratitude not only to my maintenance team, uh, but the, the boss function. Uh, they've been a huge essential uh, part in making sure this mission uh, becomes successful. So, thank you. Amid an increasingly severe security environment in the Indo-Pacific region, the U.S.-Japan alliance has repeatedly committed 
to bolstering our defensive capabilities. This MQ-9 deployment is just one more way in which we are working together as an alliance to enhance our bilateral abilities to maintain our mutual peace and prosperity. This deployment has been planned in coordination with Japan and in support of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command's intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations. As you know, the 319th Expeditionary Reconnaissance Squadron was formally stood up on 1 October 2022 and is comprised of professional service members from various bases such as Misawa, Kadena, and Yokota Air Bases here in Japan. Others have arrived from bases in Guam, Hawaii, Alaska, and Nevada to participate in this mission. The aircrew and aircraft are from the 432nd Wing, headquartered at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. These personnel will be re responsible for the launch and recovery and maintenance of the MQ-9s. Preparations are well underway to ready the aircraft and airmen for this important mission. I'm encouraged by the progress we're making and appreciate the tremendous support we're receiving from our SDF partners and the local community. We expect the first operational flight to take place this month. The BIAC exemplifies the evolution of shared Japan-U.S. defense initiatives, resulting from shared mutual security interests in the region. As the regional globe and global threats have increased, so has the cooperation imperative for us. Therefore, having a first real-time information sharing capability between the JSDF and U.S. is very, very important. The BIAC will provide timely reports from data collected by U.S. and Japan ISR, facilitating joint analysis. Analysis subject matter experts will increase regional threat situational awareness in order to support informed decision making by defense leaders of both countries. China's unilateral attempts to change the status quo by force and North Korea's repeated ballistic missile launches. The establishment of this organization further strengthened the persistent monitoring posture against the unusual actions of vessels in the area surrounding Japan and contribute to enhance the deterrence against provocative actions and coercive attempts to unilaterally change the status quo in the region.